video is a little weird because I'm basically going through an entire year in about 15 minutes, whereas all of my previous videos have been uh, recounting maybe a couple of days or weeks at most. But uh, in this case, I'm just the events are all really kind of spread out, so I'm just going to kind of try to hit all the high points. So, like I mentioned in my last video, also I should say this is a continuation of the series, so if you haven't watched the rest of it, maybe you should go do that. This is the second to last video of this series, and as I mentioned in the last one, I kind of talked about how I had finished radiation, but I still had to be taking chemo uh, for the next year. So, the chemo that I was on was just pills, so it was pretty good. I could... Um, just, uh, you know, take them at home. I didn't have to go into a doctor. I was still going in for blood tests, uh, not twice a week anymore, but once every two weeks or three weeks, something like that. Uh, it was a lot more spaced out. Just make sure that everything was all right, which for the most part it was. Uh, you know, there were a few blips in there just with, again, those hemoglobins being low, which I talked about in the last video, is apparently an issue for me. Uh, but that all got dealt with. So I did kind of eventually go back to school. It was really slow. Uh, first I was just doing afternoons, um, and eventually I went up to doing whole days. Uh, you know, by the end of the, by the end of my grade nine school year, I was doing full days at school. I did write all my finals that time, but it was like I got sections cut out of my finals that I've been missing for, which I appreciate the school was able to do that for me, but, you know, maybe it did kind of hurt me that I didn't have, well, you know what, I, I mean, technically some people would argue that it kind of hurts a person if you're sick and they just freeze your grade and let you kind of fall behind. Um, in terms of your knowledge, if they just pass you along, but me, I'd say I'm glad that that's what they did to me and that I didn't have to repeat classes because I just feel like I would have just gotten discouraged and probably would have almost stopped trying with certain classes. It was, it, it was rough, so I'm glad that I had teachers and counselors at my school who were able to do that for me. Uh, the summer after that um, wasn't too uh, exciting. I did get to eventually convince um, my doctors to drop down that Accutane do dose that I was on. Uh, if you recall from my last video, I was on Accutane because it somehow makes the type of chemo that I was on work better. I literally still do not understand how that is a thing, but... It is, and I was like the guinea pig to test it out. But you know, I was I was allergic to it, so it was causing me some big issues. Um, and I did eventually convince them to they let me go off the, the Accutane completely for a month. I was still on chemo, and then they brought it back with like a half dose. So that was good because yeah, I know that it makes chemo work. That it supposedly makes the chemo work better, but Honestly, it was just so bad for me. I was getting hives all over and oh, itchiness, and I was on allergy medication, but it didn't help all that much. I mean, it helped a little bit for sure, but not as much as maybe it could have, as I would have wanted it to. Uh, when I was on chemo for this year, it wasn't, the important thing is that it wasn't chemo every single day for a year. It was one week out of every month, I would take a pill every morning. So it was uh, really spaced out, but it was, uh, you know, still going. And there would still be some effects, even during the weeks when I wasn't actually taking the pills. I would still feel some of the effects, but for the most part, it was really good. I went back to school, uh, grade 10, I was doing full days of school. Uh, I was catching up on stuff pretty good, except, you know, math was an issue, but all the rest of it was fine. Uh, and I was kind of getting back to normal, and this is where I'm kind of gonna just fly through some stuff really fast, just to maybe tie up some loose ends. Um, 
some of this stuff, you know, technically I didn't figure it out until after that year was over, but I'm going to put it in now. Um, this is just kind of the aftermath of a lot of the different things that happened to me and to my body while I was going through treatment. So my hand, I did do a lot of physical therapy. I uh, still have exercises that I do. It was recovering and getting better. And I mean, I, this is one of my exercises, just touch your thumb to each of your fingers. One of my problems that I have is that my fingers don't move so well individually. Like when I move one, all the rest of them want to come with it, which is a bit annoying, but it's something I've got a lot of strength in this hand is one thing that my physical therapist has told me. It's just the mobility that's an issue. And the other thing is that apparently um, one of my physical therapists at one point, you know, she sat in when I went to a music therapy session and uh, she said that when I'm sitting down at a piano or when I have my food up, the amount of mobility that I display in my hand is more than what I do when I'm just doing their exercises, which is strange. I mean, it's not like I'm trying harder when I'm playing music or anything. It's just, it's like something in my brain just clicks because I'm doing something practical and I can actually see a purpose to what I'm doing as opposed to just random exercises. So I did keep on playing, uh, I took, keep on taking piano lessons for one thing, but also playing flute and band and piano and jazz band. And, um, you know, it was rough, but it was, in the long run, I think it was really good for me that I had that in my life, even though, you know, maybe I wasn't playing the best that I could have. There's also are some issues that I have just because, you know, I did have brain surgery and, uh, you know, I, I do have what is considered an acquired brain injury. So I have, I went to a neuropsych, uh, uh, so I think two times I went, uh, to two different neuropsychs, once before, uh, my surgery and then once after so that we were able to compare some of the differences and there are things that have changed. Uh, for one thing, I don't have the best short term memory. Like my long term memory is fine, but I can't really memorize things really well. Um, that's a struggle for me. I have some issues with like math and stuff, which is actually, you know, that was a problem before I had surgery, but um, you know, and that combined with, you know, I did miss like a half a year of classes combined with brain injury, basically the conclusions that all those things add up to being <sighs> something that's going to cause me some big issues with complicated math problems. Um, one thing that is really kind of weird slash interesting, I think it's kind of interesting, is that uh, and I think I maybe mentioned this in one of an earlier video, said it's going to come back here. At, if I did, then here's where it's coming back. So me, like, catching and throwing things is not something that I'm good at. It's not something that I have ever been good at. This used to be a game that my family played. Let's throw something at Hannah and watch her get hit in the face. Like, because, well, to be, I'm, by the way, I'm talking about things like pillows, by the way, like not things that are going to actually do any harm. My family is not evil. Um, so, uh, and one of the things that did happen is that when they looked at all my scans and compared my before and after, there is a possibility that, so because, you know, I did have my brain tumor over the side that controls my left hand, even before I had surgery, I maybe had some sort of issues with mobilizing that hand. But more importantly, I kind of have, I don't even think it's really depth perception issues. I, I mean, it's like my, this is weird to explain. So my left eye is actually technically more dominant than my right eye, uh, but my right hand is more dominant than my left hand. And that is 
likely because of the brain tumor because we don't know how long that tumor was there, but there is a going theory that it has actually probably been there in some form or another for most of my life and just didn't start causing problems until I was 14. So uh, if that is the case, and that maybe explains why I can never catch or throw things because what I'm seeing doesn't match up to what I'm physically doing. It's it's re I don't really understand it completely. I just like that I have an excuse for why I was always so bad at sports in elementary school. You know, like stuff like swimming and running. I'm good at that. It's uh things where I've got to like hit something or catch something. No. Um so yeah, going through that next year I did do a lot of trying to get back to normal. Um I did, you know, like I've mentioned, I did lose a lot of my hair when I was on radiation. It was at, when we did a uh, frostbite formal, I think is the name of it. It was a dance that we, uh, that my school put on in the winter. That was the first time when I tried to um, just go out without my hat on. And I kind of like, it was like if I parted my hair from one side over to the other to kind of cover up my bald spots and I had a headband and lots of pins in to kind of hold it in place and it actually worked out pretty well and that's what I started doing. I also just need to give a shout out here. I had this amazing person uh, in my life who, um, you know, when we did our school musicals, our uh, choir director who also ran the musical theater uh, department had a couple of friends, a mother and daughter that she brought in to do all of our choreography and our blocking and our tech stuff. And uh, the mother of this uh, pair, she had gotten a start in theater doing hair and makeup. So she was so helpful. And she went out and actually uh, found some extensions for me. So I didn't, I wasn't wearing a full wig. I just had this little hair extension and she did them in and it looked so freaking real like it was great I remember when I was doing that show and I and when I had my hair put in and I was just it's it just like okay I get to be like everybody else like all these other girls I get to have my hair look because it was, it was a musical and I was in the ensemble so you know all of us girls we were kind of doing our hair more or less the same way you know we all had like kind of the same kind of curls and the same, like we had about, I don't know, four or five different styles that everybody uh, just chose from. And I got to be the same as them, despite the fact that I didn't actually have the hair to do any of those hairstyles. Okay, so I'm kind of going to skip forward now to April, when we hit the end of my treatment because that was when it was just like, you know what, it, it's it's too, too much to hope that everything was going to go perfectly. Everything had been going really good up until then. My last round of chemo, I went in to get the blood test done, and they told me that my hemoglobins, once again, were really low, and that they couldn't start me on chemo, because it was just too low to really be able to do that safely and so they were going to have to put it back a week which wouldn't have been a big deal except for uh, two weeks from then I was going to Disneyland. The senior music groups at my school, the 11s and 12s, were going to Disneyland. Disney has a arts program where they bring in different performers from all over the world and you get to perform in the parks and my school had been accepted to do this program. They've been accepted several times actually. Uh, now they were going again and because I was involved in chamber choir uh, I got invited to come along and Actually, I wasn't going to go because it was like, oh, geez, it's a lot of money and it's time off school. But then my parents basically just texted my choir director and said, yeah, she's going, which thanks for that. 
so I was going as was uh, my one of my best friends, Jillian. Uh, she was actually going to be there anyway because her family was on a trip to California at the same time. So she was there. I was going along with two other grade 10 girls and then all of the 11s and 12s. And with this chemo being pushed back, it meant that I was going to finish chemo on a Monday and then leave for Disneyland on that Wednesday or Wednesday or Thursday, something like that. Um, so that was, you know, obviously it was just something that I figured like, no, there's no way that can happen because honestly, it can't like I the good news is that you know at least I'd be done taking the physical pills which I if I had had to still take the actual pills then I would be screwed there would have been no way I could have gone to Disneyland while I found the pills but even after having just finished that like you know you're going to a new climate you've got to go on an airplane which all this stuff you know it's it's fine, it's safe, but you know, if you do have pre-existing health problems that are going on, you gotta be cautious. Um, and also, when we do these music trips uh, that we went on with my high school, it is, it's not a vacation. I mean, yes, you get to do a ton of fun stuff and it's great, but it's honestly very little sleep, a lot of go, 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 go. Um, it's, it's not exactly, stress-free. It is a lot of fun, and I enjoyed all those trips that I went on so much, but geez, I really needed a nap at the end of them. Plus, also, you know, it's Disneyland. There's rides there. There's uh, lots of, you know, food that is maybe not the healthiest for you, but whatever. You only get to eat it when you're in Disneyland. And, you know, for someone who's on a medication that tends to make people very nauseous, that is like not a good combination at all. So anyways, I had a little bit of a breakdown after we got back from the doctors that day. I just uh, got out of my mom's car and just left, went down the street, went for a walk for a while. I just didn't know. But, you know, it actually did work out. I pulled myself together and went through with waiting another week and got that last chemo treatment finished on April 13th. And then on April 16th, I flew to Disneyland. <laughs> um, among some of the other really good things that worked out in my favor, uh, whenever we travel international with a school, um, you know, we always have a, like, medical person with us, uh, who in this case we had two, we had, one was the mom of one of our, one of the students who was a nurse, and then the other was the wife of my band director, who, she was a nurse, and because she was already, you know, married to my band director, she kind of knew the story, because he knew the story, um, so she and her husband, too, were really looking after me while I was on that trip, um, making sure I was fine. And also, we just had a lot of the chaperones that had kind of heard what was happening, and they went out of their way to help me out. One of them had gone and mentioned to one of the cast members at Disney that we had a girl here who has just finished up cancer treatment. And so they set it up that me and I got to pick some people. So I picked, um, you know, Jillian and the two other grade 10 girls that had come with us, as well as the grade 11 and 12 girls that were, that I was staying in a room with. And we got to go have like a private photo session with Mickey Mouse. We got to like skip the line and just not just get like one picture. We got to like stay there for a while and get a whole bunch of pictures. And we even got to go sing for Mickey and, uh, because, uh, we said that we were a choir group, so then the cast members who were there taking our pictures, they were just like, oh, well, why don't you sing a song? So we sang, like, Let It Go, and it dreams the wish your heart makes, and it was super fun. Also, uh, had, there was another chaperone who looked into 
finding out that Disney has this thing called a DAS Pass, Disney Accessibility Services. And I'm mentioning this because this is the kind of thing that I would not have known about if someone had, hadn't looked into it for me. And even then, I was kind of hesitant about taking it because I was just like, hey, I'm not really disabled. I mean, like, yes, I do have some issues, but it's not like I'm in a wheelchair or anything. Basically, uh, Disney has this DAS Pass thing. If you're applicable for it, I highly recommend you go and get it. You're not cheating the system or anything, which was really what I felt like at first. Uh, but, you know, um, it was more of just, you know, like the way that the chaperone tried to convince me was, well, you don't want to be waiting out in the hot sun while you've already got some different medications in your system that had already caused me, you know, a few minor problems. So the DAS Pass thing, it's really great, and I do want to mention it in case there are other people who could take advantage of it. You go, you can get, use it uh, once an hour or once every two hours, something like that, and you pick a, you go to this booth or whatever they have, some in the park, and they've got all the rides up there listed along with a time that is like the equivalent to waiting in line. It, it's it's kind of like a more slightly more complicated version of a fast pass, uh, and you pick your ride. They schedule it. They like do a scan of your DAS pass thing so that you know you've used up that uh, one use of it, and you then you go you wait out your time. You can wait it out somewhere else in the park, just like a fast pass, and then you go in and just skip the line on the ride and. Yes, I was really hesitant to take it because I felt like I was kind of taking advantage of the system and taking it away from someone who might actually need it, but no, that's really not the case. This is not something that a lot of people seem to know about, so it doesn't actually get used that often, and it did really help me in terms of, you know, just enjoying my trip more and also probably did I do have to admit that yes the fact that I wasn't waiting around in the hot sun so long so often probably did help me in terms of the medical side of things <laughs> uh, please don't get down in the comments and yell at me for taking advantage of Disney because it did help me okay I know I'm not terribly disabled but you know it did help oh, okay Okay, that's it. So that was kind of like my, it's kind of like a double celebration because in addition to uh, having just finished chemo, also our last day in Disneyland was a week before my birthday. So, you know, I got one of those birthday pins because whatever. I, I know that's kind of cheating the system too, but come on, it's, it's a week away. It's close enough. So, you know, everyone got to go sit, had to go say happy birthday to me, like all of the characters and everything, and that was a ton of fun. And, you know, it was just really great. It was a really great end to what was a really not great experience. So I'm going to leave it there. I have one more video to do to wrap up this series, which is coming out next week. And I'm not, please maybe go watch that if you want to know kind of the ending to all this. Also, kind of going to give an update on the future of the vlog in general in that video, so stay tuned for that. See you later.